Hello guys, I'm Lily and here is the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me. I found out one of my family's stories was a huge lie. I have a really big family. Decades ago my great-grandfather came to the United States from Romania. Keeping family ties is kind of a national trait for us too, but the main thing is that everybody loves each other a lot. Now we all live near each other in the same town and get together on every holiday or just whenever we feel like it. So between all my aunts, uncles, grandmas and grandpas, there are very few people that I haven't met. Some of them died young. One of my uncles moved to Europe and stayed there with his family. Well, we did talk on the phone once, while the others are here and we see each other every week. The only blind spot in my family tree has always been my dad's father, my grandpa. My family was not all that willing to talk about him. The thing that I do remember hearing was that he died in the war but no one would even say which war that was. And I didn't take much interest in this until my first year of high school. It was early November and Veterans Day was coming up. Our history teacher invited us to talk about war veterans from our families, if we wanted to. I thought I'd love to talk about my grandpa, who I'd never met. When I came home and asked my dad, he got all annoyed and refused to talk. He said that stuff like this is personal and that I shouldn't be talking about it in class. That didn't make much sense to me. I saw the look on my dad's face when he was saying it. Something wasn't right. So I went to ask some of my other relatives. After I kept on at them and wouldn't let them change the subject, all of them said basically the same thing. But the details were different. Aunt Angie said he was in the infantry. Grandpa George said he was in aviation. While Grandma Anne said that she could not remember. But what was more striking is they didn't even mention the same war. Two of them said it was Vietnam, while Grandma Anne said it was Korea, which was not even, like, mathematically possible. And when I pointed out their contradictions, they said something like, It was a long time ago. It's hard to remember. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Nothing is ever hard to remember when it comes to my family's history. Something was not right. And I was the only person that was going to figure this out. I started my own research. I looked through lots and lots of veterans' lists from Vietnam and Korea. All I had was his last name, and I found nothing. Then I made a couple of phone calls to the local memorial foundations. They looked through their archives and didn't find any mentions either. That was where I got even more excited. What if my grandpa was still alive? And if that's true, then why did he separate from the family? After nights of googling, I was so desperate I switched to searching on Facebook. I mean, I know that wasn't the most logical thing to do, but everyone I found with the same surname were either my family members that I already knew or some people who couldn't be my missing grandpa. Unless he had an anime profile pic. Of course, I did not tell my parents or anyone else what I was doing, and nobody asked, thinking I was satisfied with their answer. A couple of weeks into my research, I was at the table at another family gathering. They were discussing some of our distant relatives that live in Romania, and a thought struck me. What if I search our original last name, the one that we had before my family got it Americanized? I ran to my room, trying not to attract too much attention, and googled it. Most of the results were irrelevant, but one of the things I found was a Facebook page of a man in his 70s who looked almost exactly like my dad. Wow! And his name was Alex. I started to write a message to him. But what are you supposed to write in a situation like this? Hey there, I'm your granddaughter from the family that cut all the ties with you. That did not sound good. Both profile pics he had were in front of a house, and I recognised the area. It was the other side of the town. My friend Kelly lives there, so I've been to the area a couple of times. Of course, I was scared to go, but I was too excited not to. The next day, I left school early and got on the bus. Finding the house was harder than I thought, but I found it. It was small, simple and pretty old. For another 20 minutes, I didn't have the nerve to knock on his door. I even thought something like, well, if my family decided to forget him, there was probably a reason. But there was no way I was turning back, so I walked up to his door and knocked on it. He opened the door. He looked annoyed, like he wasn't expecting any visitors and obviously didn't want any. But then, it looked like he thought my face was familiar. Maybe he felt something. 
I started to tell the whole story as quickly as I could. He listened for a while silently, but then interrupted me and said that I was obviously mistaken and that he was someone else. I could see he didn't mean it. Then he just shut the door right in my face. I couldn't stop crying on my way back home, but that same night I added him on Facebook to, I don't know, give him another chance. Imagine how hard it had all been for him. I didn't hope for much when I did it, but a couple of days later I received a message from him. He invited me to talk. So the next day, I went back to his house and knocked on the door. He invited me in. The house was pretty messy, and the whole situation was so awkward for both of us. The conversation wasn't easy. I had lots and lots of questions, but he needed time to give me the answers. We had plenty of meetings after that, so now I know the whole story. And here it is. When he was young, my grandpa had a bad group of friends or got involved in a lot of serious crimes. He was part of a gang or something, and over the years it all got worse. When he was in his late twenties, shortly after my dad was born, he was caught by the police and got a long prison sentence. A lot of his crimes that had been secret, even to his family, were now out in the open. It was such a shock to everybody that the whole family sort of pretended that this man never existed. They replaced him with the legend of a soldier who had died in the war. When Alex was released, he was already in his 60s. People at the local community centre created a Facebook page for him to help him feel less alone. And several years later, I found it. I knew him as a sad man who was full of regret. Our meetings lasted for about six months and none of my family knew what I had been doing. I'd already been thinking about introducing him to his son again, but Alex died of a heart attack. It seemed that us getting acquainted brought a little more peace into his life. I finally told everything to my parents after he died. At first they got mad and stuff, but over time my dad started to ask questions about him and learned a lot about his father's life. Over the years the whole family has even started to visit him at the cemetery. Nothing as amazing as this has happened to me ever since. If your family has legends that you are not sure are true, share your stories in the comments and subscribe to the channel for more videos.